In our discussion of Slater determinants, we're now going to move on to think about what are all the possible different ways we could have a Slater determinant occupied based off of all of the spin orbitals that are available to us. So in some typical molecular system, we're going to have n electrons, as we've been mentioning in this chapter so far, and that would give us n occupied spin orbitals. And also, it's generally quite difficult to solve for what these spin orbitals are in general without some sort of uh, additional help. So what we usually have, as we'll see later on, is a set of basis functions, things that look like hydrogen atomic orbitals that are modified a little bit that give us an idea for how we can add them together to make those spatial uh, orbitals. And there's usually what we would say, call k of those. So usually k would be greater than n over 2, sometimes much greater than, because for each of those uh, spin orbitals, for each of those spatial orbitals, we can have either spin up or spin down, which means if we have k basis functions, we can have a total of 2k spin orbitals. So in that case, if we have 2k spin orbitals and n of them are occupied, then 2k minus n of, 2K minus n of them are going to be unoccupied or virtual. So the question then arises, well, in the case where we start at the lowest energy available spin orbital and we put an electron there, and then we keep going up, putting an electron in whatever lowest energy remaining orbital we have, that would be the Aufbau principle from general chemistry. If we follow that for every electron and then get to our nth electron, we would have what we call the ground state or the lowest energy determinant possible. But that's only one possible determinant. You could imagine we don't put them all in that order, or we put some higher, maybe we put one higher, or two, or a large number higher. So those would be what we would call excited determinants, or those which are not the ground state, the lowest possible set of occupied orbitals in terms of energy. So the question would arise then, how many of these determinants are there? Well, if we have 2k spin orbitals, and we're choosing which n of them are going to be occupied, then that would be the combinatorical number 2k choose n, indicated by this formula. So that's 2k factorial divided by 2k minus n factorial, and also divided by n factorial. So we'll remind ourselves that the factorial is you start at that number, and you multiply by every number below it all the way down to 1. So 10 factorial would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 all the way down to 1. So in that case, uh, a little bit of these cancel due to this denominator, but usually k is, is somewhat bigger than n, and often it's much bigger than n. So what we get is something that's not that different to, to 2k factorial, or something that as we increase k, uh, we're going to get something that increases factorially, which is exponentially. So there's an enormous, enormous number of determinants available uh, very quickly as the number of basis functions increases, increasing the number of spin orbitals. And every one of those except one is going to be excited because there's only one ground state and every other determinant is excited. So as I mentioned, the case where we take um, electron 1, put it in orbital 1, electron 2 in orbital 2, etc., where we have the n electrons in the lowest n available spin orbitals, that's called our ground state. If instead we take one electron from or spin orbital A, put it up to spin orbital R, where it's some higher energy unoccupied orbital, we would call that singly excited, where there's a single electron we move up from uh, lowest energy to not lowest energy orbital. We also have what are called doubly excited in the example on the right here where I've taken two orbitals from two electrons from spin orbitals A and B, moved them up to R and S. Uh, that's a doubly excited and then it goes on from there. So if we could have in general some m-fold excited uh, determinant where m goes all the way from zero at the ground state up to n where all of the electrons have been excited into a higher energy state or higher energy spin orbital than is available to them. Okay, so, um, and we'd also indicate that we note that the start the indexing for occupied or 
We'll start the indexing for or orbitals which are occupied in the ground state at A, B, C, etc. for those, and those which are unoccupied in the ground state at R, S, T, etc. for that type of index. So if you see these types of terms here, that's electron moved up from A to R, from B to S, etc. All right, so as I mentioned, there's one or a constant number, order one, uh, ground state. How many singly excited determinants are there? Well, we could have taken any electron from these n and moved it up to any of these 2k minus n excited states. So 2k minus n times n, or if k is growing with n, then we have about a quadratic or n squared number of singly excited determinants. If we have uh, if we have for doubly excited determinants, I could take any pair from down here, and there's a quadratic number of those pairs, n times n minus one over two, and any and move them up to any pair of orbitals up here, two k minus n times two k minus n minus one over two. So if k again is is linear is proportional to n, then we get a quartic number of doubly excited determinants. And you can see that this exercise is showing that very, very quickly you get a dramatic increase in the number of available excited determinants at a level of excitation. So in general, if you do some m-fold excitation, you're going to have on the order of n to the 2m of those to be available. So triply excited, there's a, there's a n to the 6 number, quadruply excited, n to the 8th. So this is why when we're dealing with excited determinants, we have to very quickly uh, usually truncate the number of excitations which are allowed in whatever calculations we're doing because it's going to grow to a computationally infeasible number very, very fast unless we have a very, very small number of electrons and thus occupied orbitals in our chemical system.